I'll call to order the September 11th, 2018 meeting of the Traffic Review Advisory Board meeting to order. Good afternoon and welcome. The Traffic Review <coughs> Board reviews items of interest regarding parking and traffic within the City of Oshkosh. We are an advisory board and our favorable recommendations today will go before the Oshkosh Common Council. The Council can accept or reject any recommendation from this board. If the board does not recommend an item and you don't agree with this decision, you may discuss the item with any common council member and the council member may then sponsor a new ordinance regarding that item. All items recommended by this board require two readings before the common council. The first reading will take place on Tuesday, September 25th at 6 p.m. and you will be allowed to comment on the item at that time, though the council will take no action. On Tuesday, October 9th at 6 p.m., the item will be on a second reading at I'm sorry, on a second reading at which point the council will take action, you will again be allowed to speak to the item at that time. For this afternoon's meeting, I will read each agenda item at which time, if you'd like to speak, please step to the podium and give your name and address. I do ask that you keep your comments pertinent to the agenda item at hand. The item will then come back to this board for discussion and action. Please call the roll. Here. Oz? Here. Berman? Here. Here. Maple? Absent. Juan Schneider? Absent. Becker? Here. Which brings us to the first item on the agenda, which is approval of minutes. Need a second? I'll second it. Any comments, questions, additions, deletions? Seeing none, call the roll on approval of minutes. Aye. Oz? Aye. Berman? Aye. Krasinski? Aye. Becker? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is public comment, but seeing as there appears to be no one from the public that wants to comment, again with the board's permission, we'll skip right to new business. First item being Oregon Street parking between West 8th and West 16th Avenue. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background, um, and then we have some visuals um, up here on the board, and then I'll also put them up on the screen. Um, but as you're aware, Oregon Street's being um, part of it's done um, from from South Park to Eighth, and then from South Park to 16th is currently being reconstructed. Um, so when it was reconstructed. Um, and striped to meet the current traffic standards. Um, some of the things that um, we tried to do with the new traffic layout was um, here on at the intersection of 9th and Oregon was making zero left, zero offset left turn lanes. So the left turn lanes face each other um, because as you know, we've had a history with the um, left turn crashes where you can't see the um, curb lane and then also prior to this reconstruction this was um, a right turn lane this was a through and a left and they were pretty tight like there was only room for like two cars in this right turn lane um, so when the road was reconstructed and the striping layout was done um, to get this proper transition and then to get 75 feet of storage here which would basically be like a, a truck length um, the road was restriped this way and it resulted in a loss of some parking um, like here you can see there was four stalls over in this area prior to the um, reconstruction and the striping and now there's a approximately one space uh, left here and the same thing over here there were four and now there's uh, one approximately left here um, so that this is probably the the block that had the most impact on, on the loss of parking. Um, but then we, we can also look as you go down further as well. There was the same type of issue at the intersection of South Park in Oregon. Um, so when this got striped, then some of the businesses um, started contacting us or contacting engineering and were concerned about the loss of parking in front of their businesses. Um, so as a result of those concerns, 
Um, the engineering staff evaluated the, the pre-construction, post-construction, on-street parking, developed uh, three alternatives. Um, and we can look at those as well as we go here. But um, one alternative was to leave the street as it's striped and advise motorists of available parking on the adjacent streets and off-street parking options, which um, I can, I'll show you that in a minute as well. There are, um, well, I can, let me pull that up quick. There's three public parking lots in the area. Um, we have the, there's the 8th Street parking lot, which is here, so that would be on the um, northwest side of 8th in Oregon. There is some angled parking here. This is the 9th Street parking lot, so that would be on the west side of Oregon. And then we have the 10th Street parking lot here, which would be on the um, southeast side of 10th and Oregon. So th there are some public parking lots available in the area. Um, however, we did have a public meeting with the um, affected business owners last Thursday, and they had expressed concern that if um, if customers couldn't see the front door of their business, that they wouldn't be as likely to patronize their businesses or might get frustrated and go somewhere else. Um, so th those were some of their concerns. Um, the, then there were, so engineering came up with um, two alternatives. That's obviously the first alternative, which would be status quo and would um, keep those turning lanes as they were designed. Um, option two would add a couple stalls. Um, we have option one, Jim. Oh, okay. Let me pull that up here. All right. So option one would add approximately, and we're just mainly, I'm just mainly focusing on between 8th and 9th right now. It would add um, one stall here and one stall on the other side of the street between 8th and 9th. Um, and how that would be done is the um, hatched out area here is currently at um, approximately 11 feet. The parking width on Main Street is eight, eight feet. So it would, if we narrowed that to eight feet, we could add one more stall on each side of the street here. <coughs> and then we could do the same down here. And then if I remember right, it was a similar on South Park and um, Oregon. Um, I don't know, Steve, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the main concerns were between 8th and 9th. I don't know if we've heard from other. Correct, that was the block where you could call it the highest percentage of the largest impact. It's, it, it was that way because 8th to 9th is a very short block, so there were a limited number of parking stalls there to begin with. On the other blocks where we did have probably a similar number of, of number of stalls lost, there just happened to be more on the block already, so it wasn't a rate of impact. So, so that would be one option. Um, it would make it a little bit tighter in here on the transitions. However, you could still have the 75-foot turn lane here and still have the, the zero offsets. And then the second option where did we go here? Would be to um, again narrow the width of the stalls to eight feet, so that would add those two stalls we talked about in option one, and then shorten the um, turn lane to 50 feet. Storage area. Or, yeah, the storage area to 50 feet. Um, so this left turn lane wouldn't have enough room for a semi. Um, and that would make it tighter through this intersection, but that would add another stall um, on each side of this intersection and then um, could do something similar down at the intersection of uh, South Park and Oregon. So those are kind of the alternatives. Um, 
like I said, we had a, biz, a public meeting last week with the with the business owners. Um, the feedback seemed to be that the customers need to see their destinations and don't like to walk too far. Um, and then there was discussion about the need to possibly add more public parking in the area. And there was also a discussion about additional parking wayfinding signage. Um, it seemed like their consensus was, you know, anything that could be done to add or improve to park options would be desirable. Um, so all the business owners were noticed about this meeting. I'm a little surprised that we don't have any of them here, but um, that's kind of, that's the background on it. So if you have any questions, I got, like I said, Mr. Godey or I will attempt to answer anything. Have they ever done a study similar to the downtown parking study or? Yeah, that's a good question. So the Walker parking study that was done focused on the area north of the river. So they didn't do a study in this area. Um, however, I mean, staff and our observations have been that there's generally parking available. Um, that 8th Street lot, customers of south of the border do utilize that. Um, you know, so from staff's experience, we haven't seen it where it's completely full. That one gets a little more utilized. The one on 9th Avenue, which is the angled parking behind the um, Expressions T-shirt shop, and then there's the um, Adventure Games. Um, that one, from what I've heard, and this is just basically hearsay, but the, the person that previously owned the game store told me that when they have, like, game tournaments or something, that gets full, but... Other than that, I think there's generally some parking available. I have never really seen the 10th Street lot heavily utilized. Um, the business owners in the area claim it does get utilized. I don't, I told them I don't know if, you know, I haven't been down there enough to say one way or another. I know that it is a gravel lot that does need some attention, which if it becomes more, and quite frankly, the reason we haven't reconstructed that lot yet is because it isn't heavily utilized. If it starts getting utilized more, that'll move up on the priority list for reconstructions. Um, as you might be aware, we get um, about, generally it's around 500000 each year in the capital budget for parking lot improvements. Um, so generally we can reconstruct maybe one lot a year, um, maybe do a little bit of maintenance. So that lot is on the list to eventually get reconstructed if it starts getting a little more usage. Um, but we don't have a study in that area. It's just more based on observations at this point. Oregon Street is considered a truck route, correct? Yes. Alternate 41 is. Right, right. But does that uh, does the shortening of that queue for that left turn lane uh, potentially alter that uh, that status? I mean, are we going to get in some uh, get into some problems with the way it's designated? Because arguably, if it's a truck route and you can't get a truck, that, that was make my a left concern. turn. I, yeah, that's why I think you know the the second alternative would, would be the best. Because I know when council discussed this, quite a few uh, property owners did come to the council meeting and was concerned about parking. And um, but at the same time, I think I agree with Mr. Becker that we need, if it's a truck route, we need to make sure the trucks can, can safely navigate. maneuver and navigate. Yeah. In that area because those they, some have to go to those businesses and some it's it's through traffic and then as mr Godey said it's a 41 alternate if the <clears throat> bridge is closed or something else is is down so um as we found out with the parking study downtown we have a walking problem everybody mm -hmm. wants to park right in front of the business that they want to get out and go to yeah, yeah. whereas if you go to like a one of the larger groceries <coughs> or the front road businesses you're not going to Park right in front of the yes. store. Yeah. No. Yeah. It seems um, to be how a little. Many uh, parking spaces are in those three lots? Um, sure, I can pull that up. So there's 20. The 9th Street lot, there are. Let's see. So there are 27 total of that. Um, five of them are leased. So 22 with two of them being handicapped. So 20 general and two handicapped. Um, the 10th Street lot has 58 spaces and approximately 12 of them are permit. The rest of them would be... And that's not March, right? Uh, 
as a yeah oh. yep they'd be assigned as permit so 12 of them are permit and the rest of them are four hour so that would be 58 probably 40 40 plus and so the, that being said do we have spot. signage that identifies these parking lots yeah current public? yep currently we have um the black signs that we put up last fall that indicate you know that it's a public parking lot mm -hmm. um and the one the one on ninth avenue well actually the 10th street lot there is a blue p that points to that parking lot um and on i want to say on the 9th street lot there is as well but they're just right at the entrance to the lot and then this is the other lot this is the 8th street lot so there are 24 spaces there one of them being handicapped and then nine of them being uh, permit most of the blocks aren't very long so you always got like a side street where you got some parking access as well yep and you're correct there also is parking on the side streets i think the the main concern that we heard from the business owners was if you can't see your destination then it was a problem i guess or you know you're not as likely to go there because you can't see it the other comment was the gps just brings you to the front door it doesn't take you to the public parking lot I, uh, I took the opportunity yesterday to, with the assistance of Mr. Godey and Mr. Collins, to walk up the street. And after that, uh, that 40 minutes, give or take, whatever it was, I'm of the opinion that status quo is the best option, and here's why. Um, with option one or option two, um, Mr. Godey was kind enough to bring a tape measure with him. and. Uh, we laid a tape measure down on the road, and to be brutally honest, um, I think it's going to be way too tight if we add that extra parking spot um, on the uh, the end of the southbound lane or at the end of the northbound lane at the corner of, is it ninth right there? Um, coming around that corner is going to be real tight, and with the way traffic is most likely going to queue to get into that left turn only lane, and with people moving straight or right, the, uh, the front bumpers of the cars that are parked there are going to be awful close to moving traffic. Couple that with the eventual snowfall that's probably going to push people further from the curb if it's not cleared properly is going to make that a bottleneck situation. And I realize the point's been made that it's going to be essentially the same as Main Street, but I think we can all reasonable people can agree that Main Street's awful tight in the wintertime. Not, uh, not even to say this time of year it's a little tight getting up and down Main Street. So for those reasons, um, I'm going to put my, uh, my two cents behind status quo as it's currently striped. I was kind of leaning that way. I was definitely not going to go with the last option uh, with the shorter uh, turn lanes, but for that reason as well, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. I think it jeopardizes. I mean, that was off the table for me right away. But. Well, I think a little bit of the dilemma and the council's going to face this on the night of the vote <laughs> is that comments were made by staff that very minimal parking was going to be disturbed. And then all of a sudden when everything gets said and done, a lot of parking was taken away. That being said, um, you don't know what you don't know until sometimes the project gets done, it gets striped, you gotta look at the usage of the roadway. I understand the businesses too, and I, I, I've been out there, I was actually out there when it first became an issue. I went out there and took some photographs and walked it myself, even before traffic got on it, and um, it is a busy street, and it will just continue to get busier, I think, as, as things go on, the arena isn't that far away as we get up in the other. Other blocks that's being remodeled will have some parking problems there probably too. So I agree. I think, um, unfortunately, I hear what they're saying, but there is public parking available. It's not the same as Main Street because almost all the Main Street businesses have parking behind I their do. businesses. Yep. Or our Oregon Streets is mostly in front of their businesses and the smaller parking lots that we have available. Um, I think maybe with some better signage and, and uh, better information available, people will adjust and people find where they need to go. I'd like to move that we go with the current uh, setup. 
Thank you. So, okay. Anyone else wish to, Bill, throw in uh, your two cents? No, I, I think uh, Dan made, a, I, I think, a good point when he said if you go to Festival Foods, you go to Menards, you go to Lowe's, you're going to be walking farther than if you could park in front of a well, place of business. Well, or in one of the lots that are arguably mm -hmm. right. half I, a block I, away. I think, that was, I think that was a good point, Dan. I, Sounds like, uh, again, unless uh, Steve is dissenting. I, I agree. I, I, and I think the improvement of the street itself makes Oregon more attractive to customers. Um, so that might even draw more customers, I would think. Do you uh, want us to take a formal vote? Or, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, then the, uh, the issue on the table is to leave Oregon Street in the area in question between West 8th and West 16th as currently configured. Again, just for the sake of Robert's rules of order, can I get a second just so we're... Second, I, I, I Just as it was formally stated. Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't second. formal at that point. Questions, comments, concerns? Please call the roll. Christensen? Aye. Oz? Aye. Herman? Aye. Wazowski? Aye. Becker? Aye. Which brings us to staff statements again. Back to you, Mr. Collins. Sure. Um, so the Jackson and New York now schools back in session. We have the no left turn signs up. Um, people were having a little bit of a hard time seeing them, so we, we, we did flag them um, until we can get the LED signs. Um, we did order the LED signs. However, they're back ordered, so it's looking like it's going to be the end of the month before um, we will see those and then we'll get them installed obviously as, as soon as we can um, So I know OPD did some motorist education, but they haven't as of yet been ticketing just because of that You know issue is giving people some time to get used to it um, so Once we get those signs up, then they'll probably do a little bit more out there, but we'll that's where we're at currently with that um, Which then but, Last but not least brings us to future agenda items. I got a citizen contact me. I know we've talked about this, I think, when I was on the traffic review board before, but um, basically, um, as you come over the Oshkoshap Bridge and by the church or that intersection, um, they feel there's, it needs to be a designated turn lane. It's got a sign, but they said that too many cars are still continuing to go straight at that intersection because they don't. You mean in front of Suplice? Um, still going on yeah. high? Right. Still, yeah, going down high. That, that oh, 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 I see what you're saying. needs to be re-looked at. That's been looked at a number of times. Do we have high access? He keep, claims there's a lot of high access. I don't see how it could be oh. because there is a, there is a curb cut um, kind of like an island there. Right. So no, they're down a ways. But I didn't know if he was concerned that with the church building their parking lot bigger, that there'd be a lot more traffic in and out of the church parking lot that might cause some problems. It's probably the same number of people that are just parking in that area. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, well, they'll be in the lot now versus yeah, yeah, on the yeah, street, yeah. so yeah. it actually should you reduce gotta, some. But he, he just wanted me to bring it up at the meeting if it, we thought there was a need to take a look at that intersection again for okay. signage and lights and anything. Oh, that, one comment, because that project is in for approved site plan review for the, uh, the church. Um, okay. They are going to be relocating their driveways farther from that intersection okay. as a result. Hmm. So uh, that should help with some of that a little bit. Uh, we're eliminating the one closest to the intersection and they're adding a new one farther to the south end of the property. All right. That probably would solve the problem. Because I don't know what the traffic counts are in that area. If I know it's busy. Right. I mean, it's a real busy because somebody wants to turn into Fox River Brewing Company, it backs up traffic pretty far. So there's a lot of traffic there. Yeah, I know that. Um, that area has been looked at a number of different times, and it's always been recommended to kind of leave the turn lane as a leave the turn lane, lane there how it is. I know actually, I want to say when Ross Wanch when he first got on the board, we looked at that issue. I want to okay. say two years probably ago, three years yeah. ago. I can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but I know it's been looked at a number of times. I mean, it, it happens. I see it happen quite often. People will go straight in the right turn only lane, but short of putting some sort of obstruction there, right. um, you know, pylons, um, so that, uh, you know, it's clear that you can't go that way. 
there's not much else that can be done and I'm certainly not going to advocate for that because and with the university there it was always you know there's always the thought that a lot of people were going to be taking that right so they thought there mm -hmm. were that's why the right turn dedicated right turn is there um, so I know it's been looked at a lot in the past I found when I looked at it last time I know I found a, a lot of history on it I know that the CIP is out, mm -hmm. not been put out there publicly yet, but um, do you anticipate anything coming back to this board to be looked at in the CIP, either recommendation-wise or, or any parking lots that you, you um, mentioned parking lots? Yeah, the only, the, the parking lot that we're looking at reconstructing for next year is the CP lot or the Convention Center North, um, but that one's going to be an expensive one so that if, we get that funded that's going to be the only parking lot we're going to be able to do next year um, but that's the one that because it was kind of designed in conjunction with the otter lot and mm -hmm. the otter lots getting reconstructed this year um, so that's what we're looking at for you mentioned parking lots. i think jim you mentioned that is it the 10th street lot that's yes. gravel yep yes is there anything that we can do to improve that in the short term so that people will use it more i mean um i don't want to say a band-aid approach but maybe right. that would be because that is the biggest lot in the area. If we can get people to use it more. Um, yeah, I know that, I mean, it's been, it's a pacer rating of, I wanna say two, so that's really low from one to 10, mm -hmm. with 10 being the best. Um, I think what we'd probably do is look at um, reconstructing it, you know, maybe with, maybe we could put in for a budget request for 20 for that lot, if that's, mm -hmm that's deemed a priority. I don't know that anything short term would really do much. I don't okay. it, if it's gravel. Right. Oh. Um, just to finish on this Oregon Street thing, the, the, the citizens had asked about more um, wayfinding signage. Is there anything we can do to assist them in that short term? Yeah, I think that we definitely could Okay. Could probably. We, you know, I think that'll be an issue for the council to right. make sure. Yeah, I think we could. Um, I have to look and see what I have left in the signed budget, but otherwise I can look at it. I'll probably look at our the park and utility mm -hmm. budget too. I mean, and see, I mean, the signs about all, you know, everything included is about $200, but I mean, if we need to put some signs up, I'm sure we can figure out a way to do that. Well, I'm just thinking maybe even if you get in that area, you know, public parking with an arrow straight right. ahead or something like that on a on an existing sign. Yep. So that people are aware that there is public parking ahead. Yeah, I, and the business owners did like that idea, mm -hmm. um, and that can be done without a whole lot of expense. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. But, so I think that definitely is very feasible. You know, and then we'll just have to decide where the best locations are for mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah, but as far as, like, um, the State Street lot, we did a mill and overlay. I mean, I don't even know there's, I don't if the lot's gravel, I don't know if, uh, and if we're going to reconstruct in a year or two, probably doesn't make sense no. to do anything there, I wouldn't think. Part of making sure the potholes are full or leveled. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's gravel right now, but if we think that's going to be utilized, then that's something we definitely can put on the priority list for reconstruction. The reason it didn't get scored higher when we did the pavement study was just because it had such low utilization. Well, maybe that would be something maybe now until next year or whatever, you have some traffic counts in those parking lots. Yep. If it increases and the, the need is there, then it moves up the ladder. Yes. Right. Yeah, we definitely. If people aren't that. taking advantage of the lots, well. Right. Yeah, because I think the the eighth and the eighth street lot and the ninth street lot are probably could use some work too. Um, once we get that, the CP lot or the convention center north lot done, I think um, north of the river is in pretty good shape, most of those parking lots, so then we can start focusing on some of these that are south of the river. Anyone else with well, a future? Yeah, I wanted no. to bring up, uh, looking out over the winter, is that south park and event parking, if we need to make any more changes there. I thought it went pretty well for the most part. There were some glitches earlier in the season, but I do think we need to add at least one more sign on uh, Osborne, because if you turn in from rugby, the first sign, you don't see it, so then you got like a really long stretch without a sign there. 
So I mean, at a minimum, I think we need to at least add that one more sign. Because one person complained to me, and then he got a ticket. He said he came off rugby and turned east onto Osborne, and he said, you know, you couldn't see that sign. And I drove, you know, I live in the neighborhood, so I went and I don't normally drive that direction, but I went to check it out. And I did find that to be true. Yeah, I can take a look at that. I know we added, we did add the additional sign um, in front of kind of where the church parking lot was. Um, yeah, I think that street worked pretty good, but like I said, you know, I could see where people can complain about Osborne because there's a long stretch, a lot of sign. Sure. Yeah, we can look at that. I haven't heard too much about it this year, so I assume it must have went pretty smooth. Yeah, I mean, I'm if I don't attend the event, you know, on, oh, I always walk, obviously, but uh, um, I, you know, at least driving by, and I thought, like I said, there's a few problems early on, but I thought the rest of the year it went pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I did get one call, you know, about the the, the special event wording, but you know, that's. It's the best we could do. You know, we talked about that in a number of meetings. That's the best we could come up with. So, yeah, like I said, you know, it might be an idea for the parks department to put a small sign where you drive in, like upcoming events or something. You know, like, you know, like yeah. they got a sign across from the middle school, right, you know, at the entrance. But. Yeah, and I know we put those wing nuts on there too, and the sign where, so now the CSOs can flip the sign so instead of saying no parking during council approved special events it just says no parking so during a special event they just flip the sign and then it says no parking so that that helped a little bit too one uh, one item that uh, i took notice of actually on a couple of occasions in the last month the bus stop immediately north of parkway on main street okay is uh, is there any way again we can uh, we can take a look at moving that further north? I don't know why that location was picked, but when a bus stops there, the whole intersection jams because all it takes is one person to follow the bus, and then they're blocking the intersection. And again, if it's a long load unload for the bus, traffic grinds to a halt right there because there's no way to get around them because of the way the uh, the lanes are marked, mm -hmm. which again is the right way but see if we can avoid a bit of a problem there. Okay. Yeah, I can take I've, a look. I've encountered it, like I said, two or three times in the last month, coming up uh, Main Street behind a bus. Okay, yeah, I can look at that. Anyone else? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.